Get the hole back. I shall let you go. Pick your running mate from North Central, North East. APC tells Tinubu Wild Coalition rejects the Muslim Muslim ticket and urges Tinubu to pick Lalo. We take a closer look at the speculations of 2023 being a tickle and Tinubu's last chance at the presidency. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The National Coalition for Democracy, Peace and Unity has rejected the idea of the All Progressive Congress APC's presidential candidate and former Lagos State Governor Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu picking a Muslim as a running mate. Now, according to the group, there was no need for the palpable tension caused by the Muslim Muslim ticket rumors uh, as this critical period uh, when APC has the Christian governor, such as Plateau State Governor Mr. Simon Lalong. Now, it also urged Tinubu to avoid being put under a few selfish persons to pick a running mate against the wishes of Nigerians. Well, joining us to discuss this is Chris Feinborn, Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress at River State and Opunabo Inko Tara, a political analyst. Thank you so much, Mr. Tara, for joining us. Thank you so much, Maria, and uh, good evening, Nigerians. So, Opunabo, let's start with the speculations. Um, the APC, what the APC has in place right now is a placeholder, which is um, Masari. And the speculations have continued to come on uh, mainstream. Um, even uh, some have speculated that it might be the Kaduna State Governor, uh, Nasser El Rufai. Um, but one's, one is wondering why it's taking the All Progressive Congress this long to pick a running mate, uh, especially for uh, the presidential ticket. Well, first and foremost, let me say that um, it is staggering that for a man who said it's been his uh, lifelong ambition, he's finding it a little bit difficult to pick a running mate. If, if uh, it's been your lifelong ambition and the mere fact that you knew that you are going to contest in the forthcoming general elections, that is the 2022 general elections, uh, one would have uh, presumed that you already have a running mate. Because um, it is it is expected that you would have discussed with your associates on who the running mate will be. So a lot of us wonder and find it difficult to fathom why it is difficult for a man like uh, Tinibu, who said it with his lifelong ambition, to get a running mate uh, weeks after the uh, conclusion of the, PDP, the APC convention. But what does that tell you? That's too much of a man that is not actually ready. is a man that is uh, glutinous for power without having a vision or a focus. And that is my conclusion. Because it's not difficult. I mean, you must have consulted with persons that you're going, to, you're going to contest, even before consulting with those associates, you already have a conviction. Don't forget, this is the same man who said, uh, or who took on bridge at uh, President Buhari, I think in one of the Western, in one of the, yeah, Western states, where they said it was instrumental to Buhari's emergence as the president, and all what not, you know, and of getting to himself the power to control such a man, whether you like it not, to have somebody that is close to his heart. I'm not talking of the Buhari's closeness to heart, where he said a man who is going to, his favorite candidate is close to his heart, and if he discloses the identity of that person, that person might be killed. That's not the kind of closeness I'm talking about. Because uh, Old Gosp is a man that speaks from, is a man of double speaks from both sides of the mouth. We are talking of a presidential candidate, aspirant, who eventually became a candidate, and it's expected that definitely he has one or two persons that will be his preference for a running mate. And so one is surprised. The deadline is tomorrow. One is surprised that until now, 
what we have is somebody that is going to fill in the gap. Because the uh, man whose name is forwarded to INEC is not his presidential, uh, he's not his running mate, but rather somebody that was supposed to hold forth in order, in order not to be guilty of transgression of the electoral act. Let me. You know, because the deadline is tomorrow. So, I am, it, it, in summary, in synopsis, Miriam, it is obvious that Bola Tinibu has no focus. Hmm. It, it is obvious that Bola, Bola Tinibu lacks what it takes to be a president. And why am I saying this? When it comes to decision making as a leader, you take a lot of issues under advisement, mm -hmm. arrive at the conclusion and down consequences. Just like what happened in the PDP with the choice of Okoa. Well, well, let me let me quickly come in there because you said a lot of things yes. and I just want to break them down. Now, you say for a person who's always wanted to, who said it's been his lifelong ambition to want to be president, it shouldn't take so much. But then he's one man compared to the number of people they have in the political party. He might be one strong man, but then he cannot work alone, can he? And I'm not in any way trying to hold forth for the may APC. I you, may I for, let, let, me, let me just get to, let me get to my question. Let me get to my question. How easy is it, knowing that in some instances, most of the time, the party reigns supreme? I mean, we've seen what the, the trials that, um, you know, the uh, PDP presidential candidate is going through for. He's even very swift choice of a COA out of the number of names that he was given. And we see how they're putting a committee together to try to appease one of those people who, were, who, was, who wasn't picked. Uh, do you think that this is just Tinubu's choice to make or it has to be a, a choice that the party is satisfied with that can help them to win the elections if you listen to me carefully i talked of a man who said it has been his lifelong ambition it, it, there's a whole back so i hope it's not affecting we, what i I'm can saying. hear you there is none we I can hear you afraid. good so a man who said it has been his lifelong ambition now, the issue of the PDP, as far as I'm concerned, is what I refer to or dismiss as a high sound of the voices of British loyalists and the silly grandiosity of their claims. Let me tell you the truth. When the law or the Constitution clearly stated that the choice of a running mate is the prerogative of uh, the standard bearer, of course, it is what we are talking about. Mary Ann, even if to do tomorrow, I say Mary Ann is my running mate. Definitely, there you have opposition. As we speak today, I'm a Christian, and you have Jews, uh, those who, who, uh, who belong to the Judaism religion, the Islamic religion, and so on. And you also have the exchange. Whether you like it or not, not everybody believes that Jesus was the Christ or is the Christ. So you are definitely going to have dissenting voices. This is the beauty, the flavor of democracy. But what makes you a leader? You have a conviction. And that conviction, your, your action should be driven by that conviction. Even if tomorrow is a deadline, don't forget. Now, even at the uh, instruction of time, 12 midnight, or is it 6 p.m. tomorrow, the issue of the running mate would have been brought to an end. Are you up to that 6 p.m. tomorrow? I tell you that any, even if you bring God as your running mate, there are people that will be opposed to it because I just said you have the extent. Mm. And so you must have consulted and you ought to have consulted widely, widely before you commence this, uh, 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 you, you, you commence your uh, uh, political pregnation journey. You ought to have con uh, consulted widely and you ought to have had one or two persons in mind taking into consideration 
the influence of the person, the impact of the person on your on, on, on your election and eventual success. You must have taken all the variables into consideration under advisement. So as you're going, all you need to do is talk to one or two you know, politics. Okay. Is simply what is politics? It has to do with interest. Articulated interest. Even if I say Marianne is my candidate, and we all belong to the same political family, I tell you that even within the same political family, you have people that are not uh, agreeing with the other faction or this other faction. It is natural. That is what is called politics. But you as a father, even in your home, as a father, you have children. If you have up to three children, I bet you, on most issues, two will agree with you or disagree with you, and one will agree with you or disagree with you. But what makes you a father? You have the final say in the interest of the family. So, in this same vein, we expected Bobatinibu to have had his running mate because the issue of consultation should have predicted the emergence as the standard bearer. Okay, let us even assume that for political reasons, he didn't want to step on polls. He didn't vote. Immediately after the convention, he would have had meetings on who is going to be his running mate. Immediately after the convention. And if those that are agreed should have been protected long before now, not to tell us that up to today, we don't have a running mate. Well, I mean, we are, like I always say, I'm not a member of APC, I'm not a member of PDD. But up to today, Tinebu does not have a running date. That means his government is definitely going to be rudderless. Let me, let me, let me, let me, he is going to let me come in there. A journey of political indiscretion, even if he becomes the president of this country. Let me come in there. It, it's, it's, it, I mean, everything that you're saying is all fine, it's dandy, but. We also need to understand the fact that Nigeria is at some point in its life where these issues are more than ever. I'm talking about religious, you know, um, ethnic <coughs> issues. These issues are okay. more, they're more obvious than they have ever been. And so people are touchy on that subject. Now, there are also those who have a school of thought that, look, we had the Abiola uh, tickets, which was a Muslim, 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 Muslim ticket, and we saw Nigerians troop out to vote for him. Uh, but that was then. This is now. Uh, many would also say that why are we even having this conversation? It's not about the religion. It should be about, um, you know, the capabilities of the persons who hold the ticket. Okay. May I quickly respond to that because of Please, time? go ahead. Yes. Is it that, that argument suffers from a, a, a training of excellence of reason and poverty of logic. First and foremost, you cannot compare the Abiola's time to now. You see, today we have been sensitized to the actuality or the artificiality of one nation. Anybody who controverts that is living in, deni in denial. After that time, there are lots of issues at stake. We had the military government. And a lot of people were hankering for democracy. They wanted a cessation of military rule. And so everything democratic was acceptable. Like a lot of people will argue that the worst democracy is better than the best military regime. I defer on that. Because all government is all about governments. That's the truth about it. We have a Gaddafi in Libya. And I tell you, if you go and ask Libyans today, they will tell you they regret their actions and would have prepared a Gaddafi to continue in office. Why? Because of his social welfare. There was really no poverty in Libya. He addressed the issues of even those at the bottom of the pecking order. And that's what, that, that what the citizens want. But then, you know, we had this belief because we had an abacha who was a dictator. And life was hard in this country. And so, but uh, suddenly, we've had democratic presidents who have been worse than an abatch of blessed people. So a lot of people felt 
we must get past, we must consign into oblivion military rule. So whatever is instead of ourselves. That is why. Number two, you have uh, an Abiola whose legitimacy was never in question. At this point, please, let me make a distinction between legitimacy and legality. Legitimacy simply means acceptability. It's different from legality, which has to do with law. Now, you have a Bacha whose legitimacy was appreciated by the sorry, God forbid it. You have an Abiola whose legitimacy was appreciated, appreciated by Nigerians. And as far as they are concerned, don't forget the vice president is always seen as a spy fire. As far as they are concerned, you just need a president that will be there in the image of Nigeria. And Abiola symbolized that. That was it. But today, the religious divide, the cleavage, is so wide. And as I said, we have been saying, even if you know, the ABC today, you have, you have to look on that central, northwest, not this. But yesterday, there was no such thing as north central. It was not that pronounced, but I think it exists. It was not that accentuated. And so, either you are from the north or you are from the south. Mm. And if you are from the north, the northerners believe that you are with them. Mm. But also, to a large extent, the northerners always had partnership with the south. Now, how do said this? That's why I said that's all right. Exit of building and poverty of blood. That was yesterday. As we speak today, if you get a Muslim Muslim ticket, I bet you it's going to be political makaba. Hmm. Because the issue of religion has been so pronounced, as said Twitter, assumed uh, we, we, what was called, a threatening dimension. Just today we heard of the killing of, of, of a Catholic priest. Hmm. We are not even of the one that was killed just how many days ago, and the ones that are, 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 are in captivity. So you cannot at all in any way deny that you have the Muslim Christian dichotomy in this country. You have the North Southern dichotomy in this country. If you make any attempts to choose a Muslim, then a Muslim with a Muslim, a running mate, and a presidential candidate. Oh, my dear, I can bet you that Nigerians will, but no matter how good those candidates are, Nigerians will work against them. All right. Because we are sensitized to the actuality of the artificiality of one nation. Let's move, let, about it. let's move away and from if that. You have to address, calm, excuse me, if you have to calm fieldness, in the broken and rotten landscape in this country, you want the sensitivity to what is going on, the contemporary issue. Okay. And that is what there is a move. Look at it, look at it uh, today. I let you this so before I ask a question. You know of a, of a lawyer who went to court dressed in juju attire. Simply because the Supreme Court ruled that you can wear hijab. And as far as it's concerned, it is a clear case of marginalization, a matter of uh, discrimination. Why will you? Well, hijab is a religious attire. All right. Let, I do not want us to veer off. I do not, uh, Mr. Nkatari, I do not want us to veer off from on this conversation. So let's let me bring you back to the conversation. Yes, yes, I get it. But let, let's not lose our, our train of thoughts here. Let's come back to the candidature of Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Now, certain people are even within the party are asking. Um, even this group are asking that he take a look at uh, Simon Lalong. But let's also uh, put Simon Lalong on the table right now. Um, let's look at his political spread, his structure, what he brings to that ticket, and the acceptability and notoriety that he can also give the Tinubu ticket. Um, how winnable is a Simon Lalong and a Tinubu ticket? <laughs> Maria, I'm not here to do an appraisal of the candidate. Or oh, sorry, running me. So that, that, that's one of my business. That is the proud be putting on the face of the standard bearer. I don't give a damn about it. I have my voters card. I have those that believe in the Abu Christian Kutari. 
If I'm not comfortable with your running mate with a pair, I just tell my polar down this human being. They're not serious. I'm not here to deliberate or eulogize uh, uh, Lalong. That's good, good. The prerogative of the standard there are very easy. All I want to let him understand is that it has to be a Muslim, a Muslim uh, Christian ticket. If it doesn't do that, it suggests political marker. But along, people, there are those who like it, there are those who don't like it. I don't hate La Long, I don't like La Long. I mean, different when it comes to La Long. But the only advantage a La Long will have is that he's a Christian. Now, if you go into the benefits of having a La Long, that should be within the ABC and the standard era. That is his job. I can't come on air to this job for him. I don't see that he has to start apologizing La Long. I don't see that he has to start denigrating the achievements of La Long. That's none of my business. It is not for the ABC standard era. Let me tell you, we don't know all those that are saying his advice. It's not about business. What we know is a tenable who will announce to the world who is running the East. It's as simple as that. And Nigerians, based on that decision, will make, based on that, will make that decision. It's as simple as that. So I will not see that have to tell you the uh, advantage of having a lalom or disadvantage of having a lalom. That's one of my business. I said, you know, I have my car. And by the spirit of the world, I can influence votes. Mm. So if you come up with a la law, and we now sit down to start a uh, kind of an appraiser, and we are okay that a la law is good. You know, let me tell you the truth. I can vote for an ABC councillor, a PDD House of Rep member, a, 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 an ABC House of Assembly member, and a YPP president, I'm more interested in the quality of the candidate. I'm not interested in the party. And that's why when people say they belong to political parties, and therefore whatever my party say, I said it's in basically leadership, and that is what has kept us where we are today. I'm not interested in that. I'm more interested in the candidate. So I'm not interested in the politics of the alone. I don't give a damn about that, my dear sister. I don't give a damn. That is the concern of the ABC and the standard era. Most importantly, the standard era, not just the ABC. Because if anything goes wrong, he takes the blame. If anything goes wrong, he takes the credit. And that is why the law says that it is the exclusive pleasure of the standard era to choose his running mates. Yeah. Now, you, you talked on, touched on something that I'm very interested in. Now, you've talked about how you might vote because you're looking at the credibility of candidates. Uh, and with the number of people we have seen so far who have been running or rushing to get their PVCs, um, do you think that we've gotten to that level of voter education where Nigerians will vote along those lines as opposed to voting for a particular party because of who the standard bearer is for the presidency? Do you see a spread of votes across different political parties that's based why, that's, on... That's why I achieved the, the, the NOA of the election of... Because it's, it, it's, it's the onus is on them to enlighten Nigeria. But unfortunately, you can't expect that from the NLA because for you to be appointed in this country is based on you have to be partisan. Unlike what uh, uh, the American president did, what was his name again? Uh, Obama. After the year of political trade, he appointed who? A Clinton. Hillary. Because the issue of the nation was paramount. It's not like that in this country. That's where we are here, we are, where we are today. Now you talk of you you, you talk of uh, electing the, the, the electorate. My dear, there is so much hungry. Nigerians are impecunious. Nigerians are hungry. And so they want to build their future. How? A lot of them don't have money to pay for their children's fees. They don't have money to uh, uh, pay for transport uh, to the next level, how to fit that day. So when A comes to say, this is how much I have, and because of the style of leadership, when people get into office, they abandon the masses. 
They come back to the nations after four years. As a result of that, Nigeria believe that let me get what I have to get. Because even if I if was the judge into office, even by the ones I supported, seriously, not just me, will abandon me. But they forget that the policies of whoever is in office will affect them and will either worsen their situation or better their situation. Mm -hmm. That's where Noah comes in. Not just Noah. Even the political parties. Even the political parties. So we, it is our job, and that's what we are doing right now. It is our job to enlighten the electorate. I have always said, collect this money. Collect this money. When you collect this money, vote your conscience. Okay. Even if you vote your conscience and it was the wrong choice, you will sleep well to say, I made a mistake. No man is perfect. Okay. But it was my conscience. All right. Do not compromise that conscience. And that is what we are doing today, Maria. Enlighten the electric, enlighten the public. Collect. Even right. if you are a member of ABC, you are a member of PDP, and you believe that the man in the ABC will deliver, by like that, collect the money from that PDP man and go to the ABC for a secret ballot. That is the whole essence of secret ballot. That is the beauty of secret ballot. Okay. Collect this money and vote okay. your conscience. I want to say thank you. Punaboinko Tire is a political, political analyst and a former aide to the governor of River State. We want to apologize on what our second guest was unable to join us. But Mr. Tire, thank you so much for your thoughts. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mary Ann. All right. Video. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we return, we will be discussing speculations of the, tw of the year 2023 being maybe the last op uh, opportunity that the PDP and the APC uh, party presidency flag bearers might have at that seat. But we'll be right back to this break.